Welcome to another Indie Showcase here on the channel, highlighting the many demos and dev submitted games we play here. If you like to submit a game for a future piece, please get in touch. But we are starting off with Alex Kidd in Miracle World, the Deluxe Edition. So this is a complete uh, upgrade or remaster of the original Alex Kidd which if you've never heard of the series, was Sega's original mascot for the Master System before Sonic the Hedgehog blew up. So this is a challenging platformer where you will also have to fight bosses using rock, paper, scissors to beat them. And that is not a joke, as you can see on the screen. So for this remaster, you can play the game either in the updated graphics or the original pixel art. And since the release, the developers have updated the controls and added in more modern accommodations, including level select. And I believe you can turn off or have unlimited lives now, although I'm not 100% sure on that one. But this is a game that, again, this is a retro platformer through and through with a lot of difficult jumps. If you're playing this with the retro controls, it does feel a little janky to move and jump in a few cases. You only get one hit per life, and it is very much what you see is what you get. If you do not like older platforming style games, Alex Kid is not going to work for you. It's very much in that similar style as the uh, Wonder Boy remasters that were released a few times in the last few years. But if you are a fan of those older games and looking for one that has some really great graphics to go with it, then check this one out. We now turn to Mini Motorways. This is the sequel to Mini Metro, which was a game about you designing subway lines and making sure the trains run on time. Now, you're designing entire road networks for different cities. Your objective is to see how long you can last designing and upgrading the infrastructure of different cities. Every few seconds, a new building will be constructed, which will require corresponding color cars to travel to it. If you don't get enough people to it in time, those little pips on the building will build up and you will get a countdown timer that if you do not meet in time, you will lose the map. As you play, you'll get randomly chosen rewards that can give you special things such as a highway, bridges, four-way intersections, and so on. And it's one of those kind of like zen, not the zen kind of puzzle games where there is definitely something very appealing and relaxed about watching all the cars move around, everything's going on time. And then you get a situation where all of a sudden buildings start springing up. You got to quickly rush to figure out how you're going to align everything to where you need to go. Like Mini Metro, there really isn't anything more beyond in terms of gameplay systems and progression. If you're hoping for unique rules, unique mechanics that can show up, that's not going to be in this game. It's very much about kind of score chasing and seeing how far you can get to unlock the next city and the cycle begins anew. If you enjoyed Mini Metro, Mini Motorways is going to be right up your alley. But if that game didn't work for you, there's not going to be anything here that's going to be new or different to change your mind. We now have our next game, Beasts of Maravilla Island. And this is an indie take on the Pokemon Snap formula, but in 3D. We play as our hero or heroine here, who has come to the island in order to research strange creatures and mythos that was told to them by their grandparent who is no longer with them. And when we discover this island, we find all variety of strange and unusual creatures that we're going to have to archive and learn more about what is going on. Now, this game is definitely 100% low stakes. There is no combat, there is no fighting. You won't have to worry about dying or losing or anything along those lines. Your mission is to catalog different creatures, and by performing different actions such as whistling or doing something in the environment, may change their behavior. And your ultimate goal is to record 
each creature in all of its different states. As you move through, you unlock different areas and get access to more creatures and the cycle continues. Now, the world itself may look open, but it is very much on the linear side. You do not have like full freedom of movement. This is definitely not 3D platforming based controls. And that may be disappointing if you're looking for a kind of open world Pokemon Snap kind of gameplay. If you do like that kind of formula and you know the relaxation of taking these photographs and just taking your own time through the space, then I think this is a great game to check out, especially if you have a younger audience or a child who's looking for something that is more relaxing with photography to play. But again, this is one of those games that if you're hoping for more meat on the bone in terms of these mechanics, I don't think you're going to find it here. So with that said, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we have three more games to look at for the showcase. And if you're interested in my thoughts on design, then check out my game design books. For entry-level students, we have 20 Essential Games to Study, and then the Game Design Deep Dive series that takes an extensive look at different genres with free-to-play coming in 2022. We now turn to Project Apocalypse. Please note the footage you're seeing is taken from a pre-early access build of the game that was sent to me by the developer. And the game is on early access now, and what you see may not represent the current version of it. This is kind of a colony sim slash zombie apocalypse style game, where your mission is to build a colony up, get people, send them out on jobs, and hopefully have enough defenses in play before the zombies come and try and get you. So like with other colony sims, your main tasks are going to be assigning jobs and constructing the various structures and items that you're going to need to outfit characters with. All in all, from what I played of this one, it had a decent kind of hook to it. The concern was just how advanced it was going to get. And again, with this being a pre-early access build, it's kind of hard to get that sentiment or that sense out of it. But for being a smaller game, I think there is something here for fans of Colony Sims or that just general survival tone to it. It's not that hard to play and we, even in the early access or the pre-early access build, I was figuring things out and getting our town here, I guess, alive before the zombies came to wreck things. But all in all, if you're a fan of Colony Sims and these kinds of survival-esque kind of games, I would say at least give this one a check and see if you'll enjoy it. We go from happily, I guess, peacefully dealing with zombies to something a lot more violent. This game is Jupiter Hell. And what it is, is what if we combine a traditional roguelike with Doom? So you are going to be ripping and tearing with metal music and killing all matter creatures, just one turn and one tile at a time. And the description, Doom as a turn-based roguelike, basically tells you, I think, everything you need to know about this game. So this is, as you can see, a turn-based roguelike where our marine here it has to fight their way through monsters, zombies, and all manner of hell. You can equip different weapons, gain various gear, and of course the entire world is procedurally generated. Now unlike traditional roguelikes that typically focus on melee and close range, here you're armed right from the get-go with a pistol and gain access to a variety of range weapons in order to shoot your way through all the enemies coming to get you. So with this one, my main issue is definitely more of a me problem, and that is I'm just not a huge traditional roguelike fan. I prefer things that are more real-time or kind of more action-based. And as it says on the tin here, I guess, with Jupiter Hell, this is a traditional roguelike first. And if you are looking for kind of a more, I guess, action-y, turn-based take on it, then definitely check this one out. But if you don't enjoy kind of the older school version of roguelikes or the more traditional takes, I don't know if this game is going to change your mind or not. 
For our final game of this video, I'm once again completely changing tones with Scoot Kaboom and the Tomb of Doom. This is a 2D platformer, very much modern retro design. You have one goal, and that is to reach the end of this, well, devious tomb, full of traps, MacGuffins, and lots and lots of spikes, in order to find your favorite food that you can choose when you start the game up. So this is a very straightforward game. There is no randomization, this is 100% of a handmade dungeon or tomb to explore. There are very frequent checkpoints, as well as hidden secrets that are usually in each section. If you play through the game, you'll eventually unlock additional characters that have different cosmetics, as well as unique rules, such as permadeath, being chased by enemies, things like that. And the game itself is again, what you see is what you get. If you have no interest in 2D platforming and anything along those lines, Skookaboom is not going to be for you. It is on the cheaper side, and I would say it's a one of those like rainy day kind of games. There's not going to be enough here to last you for hours and hours of entertainment, but the gameplay is on point. It has some decent variety in terms of the obstacles, and it is on the challenging side, especially when you get to some of the later areas. But with that said, we're going to wrap up our showcase here. You'll find links to all the games in the description down below, and get in touch if you'd like to submit a game for a future stream and video. Do all the liking, subscribing, and commenting people tell you to do? Check out our Discord and Patreon link down below, and come back for daily discussions on game design here and on game wisdom, where we simply are in science of games. Until next time, take care.